There is a new update to Lightroom Classic and it adds a couple of really cool little things. So we're going to take a look at how they work. We're going to kind of dive into it. Let's just, do you know what? Let's just get involved. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each every each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Let's dive into Lightroom Classic. We're going to focus on the new tool which allows us to very quickly, very easily, remove a couple of distractions from a photo. People and reflections being the two things that have been added so far. Now, this isn't always gonna be something that I think you're gonna to want to do. You're not always gonna to want to remove people from a photo because sometimes people are an integral part of a photo. I mean, something like this photo, I think it's important to have the people there because it's capturing the kind of feeling and the vibe of the place as opposed to just the architecture. Whereas maybe, you know what, maybe something like this we might actually want to remove the people. Let's see if we can do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this is an unedited photo actually. I'm just gonna correct the perspective a little bit of the photo. Great, so I've just pressed auto. That's actually done a pretty good job. Let's come all the way back up now and we're gonna click on the remove tool at the top. And you'll see that it's very similar to how it was, but we now have this additional little part down here, distraction removal. And we've got reflections, which is currently ticked to be kind of expanded. And we've got people. I'm gonna to click to expand that. And as I do that, Lyrum is gonna detect the people in the frame. You can see it draws an overlay, a mask, if you like, around those people. And we can see that, it's highlighted in red. We've got two different masks here. And all I have to do is click remove. And Lyrum is gonna use its generative AI to actually fill in that area and hopefully remove those people. Let's take a look. There you go. Look at that, that is incredibly clean. And that was so easy to do. That's really remarkable, actually. So that photo is immediately cleaned up, I think, for getting this nice kind of street vibe. Let's look at something like this, where we've got, I think, these nice people kind of walking around. I actually want to keep the two people over here. You can see Lyra has actually immediately decided that I obviously want to remove people again. Now, in this situation, I want to keep these two, these two people walking along this street here. So all I have to do is actually click on this little icon here. I'm going to press delete and then click there, press delete on my keyboard again. And now we're just removing these people over here. So we'll click remove. Essentially what Lightroom is doing is just drawing masks around what it considers to be people in the frame. There we go, done, immediately done again. Now, this is perhaps highlighting a little bit of the issue with generative AI like this. I don't have a huge amount of control over what it does. So it's actually kind of put this I guess kind of plant shrubbery kind of stuff here. If I click on this icon, I can come down and go through a few different variations. So if we click it again, that's probably better. One more, that's probably still not too bad. That's probably better than maybe what I was looking at before. The shadow is a little bit weird. We could go ahead and click generate again to get a new generated area there kind of filling that in. Okay, that's probably that's probably a lot better. That's probably a lot better. Okay, good. Now, something that's really interesting about this update to Lyrum as well is now that we've done that, right, we can also see up in the top right, there's this new little icon up here that says AI edit status. And if you click on this, it will actually show you all of the different AI tools that you've used on this photo. So in this case, we've got distraction removal people. So you can actually keep track of what you have done, what you are doing, right? And it'll it'll list everything from masks using AI through to things like this, removing things from the photo. It's quite a useful way to just make sure you're keeping on top of how much AI is being used in your photo, which is, you know, it's important because it's becoming more and more prominent really in the photo editing world. Let's take a look at another photo just to see how it's doing with kind of some difficult stuff. Maybe something like this There's a lot of people in this photo. So let's see how it handles it. Let's come up to remove. It's immediately highlighted the people. It's quite fast, isn't it? That is fast. And then we're just gonna go ahead and click remove again. Let's see how it does. It's reasonably quick, I think, considering how much it's actually trying to work out here. And look at that. That is pretty crazy, actually. That has done a really, really good job. Now, like I said, there are gonna be lots of times when I don't think this is gonna be a particularly useful tool because there are times when you want the people, right? Maybe this is one of those photos. You wanna capture the vibe and the feeling of the place. 
There are also better ways, I think, to capture these streets and things like that without people, which is to head out at the right time of day to do that. If you go out really early, you will get fewer people in your shots, maybe even none. That's probably the better way to do this, right? But if you can't do that, for whatever reason, it's a useful tool to have at your disposal if you wanna use it. Now let's take a look at the other part of this, which is removing reflections from glass, for example. And actually this is, I mean, this has got a lot of potential. This is in theory, such a useful tool because if you don't have a polarizing filter or perhaps you just weren't able to sort it at the time for whatever reason, this is something that could be amazing. I had a little bit of a play with it before shooting the video. I found it to be a little bit hit and miss. So we're gonna kind of see, we're gonna kind of see how that goes. This photo, for example, is taken through a window, but we've got some little reflections down here, for example. What we're gonna do is come up to remove, not people, but this time reflections. And you can see there's a couple of different options we've got here. We've got apply, which is of course what we're gonna click in a second, but the quality, we might just wanna to click to see what we can do. Now preview is going to work the fastest, but the actual overall quality will probably be the lowest. And so what we can do is start off by using preview to see how Lightroom will do it, right? And then we can actually just update it to the best quality. That's the way that seems to work the best. So for example, if we do it in preview and we click apply, you can see it's pretty quick, estimated time, eight seconds. That's not too bad. So we just wait for that. That's done a pretty good job. You can actually see by just using this slider, if I drag this down to more sort of to zero, if I go the other way, you'll see just the reflection down to zero, that's without the reflection removal, and then all the way up, you can see it basically is getting rid of it. Now what we could do is actually just change that quality to best, so we know how well Lightroom is gonna be able to do it in theory. Now we want it to do it at a high quality. Now you can see it said estimated time two minutes. That would be a lot longer to wait to see how good of a job Lightroom is able to do with these reflections. What is it able to detect in terms of reflections, stuff like that. So it's much easier to start off in that preview mode and then move to best, I think. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Okay, so it's done the job of doing that at the best quality. Let's just bring that slider down a bit. So you can see it's done a pretty good job there. We do still get a little bit of a strange artifact kind of here, which is maybe not ideal, but it's probably better than it was. That's kind of personal preference. Now, for me, this seems to work a little hit or miss on different photos, right? If we go over to this photo, for example, you can see we've got a couple of reflections up here. So if we were to go ahead and click, let's put this on preview, I click apply. Let's see how good of a job Lightroom does at, at locating that and getting rid of it. Not particularly good, right? Because it's still there. And if I was to bring that down, and actually all the way, you can see the reflections that it's found, almost nothing. Well, it is basically nothing. So it's not doing a particularly good job on that photo. It didn't find the reflection. But in theory, these are two pretty useful tools, right? In certain circumstances. Certainly the people tool seems to work a lot better, I think, than the reflection tool. So I think that's useful. I think it's actually potentially a very useful thing. Sometimes you just can't get people out of your shot. You just can't get to the right place, the right time. And it, you know, you can't really control that, right? Especially in a city or a landscape, something like that. There's not so much you can do. Now you can already remove people just using the remove tool. This is just a much quicker way to instantly get all those people, click remove, done. So it just speeds up your workflow, right? It's not in theory a, a new tool so much as it's just a new way to use the tool in a much quicker way. So I think that's really good. And the reflection stuff, you know what? Who knows, maybe it's gonna be updated in the future, maybe it's gonna work better and we're just at the start of this kind of stuff. So it's really interesting to see where these tools are kind of coming in. Does this interest you? Is this something that you're planning to use in future edits? Is this something that you would embrace? Or do you want to keep it more true to life? Keep the people in the shot, right? Capture that vibe more so than maybe other stuff. Let me know in the comments. That's always really interesting. Let me know what you think about all this stuff down there. Of course, we've got a full list of all the kit we use for these photos for all this stuff down in the description as well. So you can check that out for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. There's new content all the time. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.